In the last several MotoGP seasons, passing has grown more challenging, and Yamaha has had more difficulties than most other brands. One of the best riders who could maintain a fast race pace but would get caught up in a large group was Maverick Vinales. However, Vinales put matters into his own hands and had a powerful effort after being pushed wide at the America's MotoGP's first turn. On his way to the win, the Spaniard passed nine riders, including Pedro Acosta, Jorge Martin, and Francesco Bagnaia. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Well, in my favor during the past, I didn't have the weapon I have now to overtake, Vinales responded, when asked how he would disprove those who doubted his ability to battle the way he did. Everyone is well aware that I used to find it difficult to get close to the riders. However, I can overbreak now that I have the bike, which is great because it's not simple to pass, even though I can attempt. Vinales, who became the first rider in the history of the MotoGP to win with three separate brands, expressed his immense satisfaction by calling it amazing. In recent years, there have been riders who have come from way down the order to win, such as Brad Binder, Marc Marquez, and Bagnaia. Vinales acknowledged that last year's potential gave him the confidence to produce the recovery ride he did, so achieving the same may prove to be a turning point for him. Esper Gro has led the RSGP riders in the World Championship standings since joining Aprilia in 2017. He has defeated riders like as Scott Redding, Andrea Iannone, and Maverick Vinales, the winner of the Suzuki and Yamaha races the previous two seasons. Esper Gro led the Aprilia Challenge in Qatar at the beginning of this season as well. He finished on the sprint podium before unexpected grip problems ended his hopes of winning the Grand Prix. Since then, though, the younger Spaniard has won all three of the races he has participated in, including the Portimao Sprint and this weekend's flawless Cota Double. The only glitch occurred during the Portimao Grand Prix, when Vinales' gearbox gave out. Despite this, he was still on track for a secure podium until his bike broke down on the last lap. It was Joan Mir's second fall in as many races as her terrible Cota MotoGP weekend came to an end. The Honda rider from Spain wasn't the only one having problems. Takaki Nakagami also crashed out of the sprint and Grand Prix. During the sprint, Johan Zarco followed suit before withdrawing from the Grand Race due to vibration problems. After the race, Mir remarked, A tough weekend that ended with a tough end. We were far behind since we didn't start the race well, but I was able to catch up to the other Honda riders after I found my rhythm. I started getting closer to the group in front, but at turn six, I lost the rear and crashed, the speaker said. The only other Honda rider to complete both races was Luca Marini. And although though the Italian's pace increased relative to the rest of the field and teammate Mir, he still finished last. I pushed really hard for the final point and did my best. To provide the engineers with more data, it was beneficial to complete the race, Marini continued. We are not in the right place right now, and this weekend is crucial for us, in my opinion. Prior to entering pit lane, Zarco was the leading Honda rider at the moment of his vibration problems. The two qualifying mishaps that title leader Jorge Martin had came back to bother him in the America's MotoGP at Coda on Sunday. The Promac Ducati rider paid the price for missing practice time on the medium rear tire, even if starting sixth on the grid was manageable, as he had demonstrated with a podium in the sprint. In a race where Pedro Acosta and Maverick Vinales, the top two riders, used the harder rubber, Martin fought teammate GP 24 racer Enea Bastianini over the last laps to take third place among the softs. With just over two laps remaining, Bastianini made his move, ending Martin's flawless five-race streak of podium finishes this season. Martin remarked, I knew yesterday would be tough because the competition was so strong. I didn't get to try the medium compound because of my two crashes in qualifying, so I entered the race on the soft compound, which I know better. This had more of an impact on the race today. I made a mistake that let my opponents close the distance between us. Martin, who is ahead of Coda winner Vinales by 24 points, will lead the World Championship standings upon his return to Europe by 21 points over Bastianini. With problems from the outset of the Coda MotoGP, the Monster Yamaha team took a chance and ran Fabio Quartararo and Alex Rins in experimental setups for the whole of the race. Quartararo entered Sunday's race with a bike I didn't try before while defending Honda event winner Rins raced a drastic shift from warm-up, indicating the factory's new risk-taking mentality. Though no breakthrough was made, the team is hopeful that the knowledge they have learned will be useful in the future. 
Massimo Marigali, the team director, stated, We can't be satisfied with today's results. There is clearly work to be done, but we are sparing no effort. Overall, the race weekend proved to be challenging yet fruitful. We have experimented, and this information will be useful to us as we get ready to make future adjustments. After battling back from 20th on the first lap to take 12th place in the Grand Prix, Quartararo earned the team's lone point of the weekend. Rins, in the meantime, made a setup choice based on the morning's 10-minute warm-up. Unlike his colleague, Rins capitalized on the chaos ahead and soared from 15th to 7th at the beginning, but he later fell behind and was caught out by his M1's heavy handling. Enea Bastianini's stellar start to 2024 continued when he finished third at the America's MotoGP at Coda, following his second-place finish in Portimao. Even though he dropped a few positions early on, Bastianini recovered and became stronger and stronger throughout the Grand Prix. With just over a lap remaining, Bastianini passed Pramac star Jorge Martin after passing teammate Francesco Bagnaia and closing in on the title leader. Following his injury recovery from last season, Bastianini had trouble adjusting to the GP23 machine. However, he has not experienced any similar problems with the upgraded 2024 spec bike this year. After three rounds, Bastianini has been one of the most consistent riders thus far, and he is optimistic about his future prospects. Not once, but twice, Pedro Acosta led a MotoGP race at Coda after Marc Marquez wrecked shortly after stealing the lead from the rookie on lap 10. Acosta led for three more laps after taking the lead back, but at turn 11, Maverick Vinales' lightning-fast pace let him pass. Acosta later admitted that nobody had a chance to defeat Vinales at Coda, thus despite his best efforts, he was unable to stay with the Aprilia man. Acosta declared, Nobody in this world could catch him today. All you have to do is look at his speed. The speed at which he ran the sprint when I saw him yesterday was also remarkable. When he passed me today, I made an attempt to block him. However, he told me that I was trying to brake harder during the turn 12 braking when he passed me, which made today really challenging. You could never get past him. It wasn't my day today. Even though Acosta didn't win in Texas, it seems like a first ever triumph is growing closer and closer for the youngster. Acosta acknowledged that the bike's maximum speed has not yet been discovered, which makes his easy style of riding even more amazing than his sheer speed. We don't know where the bike's limit is at the moment, Acosta said. We are not crashing frequently, as you can see. Following the sprint on Saturday, in which Vinales, Marc Marquez, and Jorge Martin all defeated Acosta, the KTM rider hinted that he had discovered some secrets. And after handling the tires more skillfully, Acosta was able to use what he had learned. Acosta said, I was able to manage the tires better. What a terrible mess yesterday was. My speed decreased as Jorge went ahead of me. Espargro was almost overtaking me too. I was attempting to control the first sector and the long right near the finish of the course during the Grand Prix. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.